Universitas Brawijaya, uh, Mr. Sidirana Menggala, PhD, and Professor Eduardo de la Pena from Gen University, Belgium. And foremost, I would like to express due to all the guests, the head of Department of Plant Pest and Disease, the head of Plant Agronomy, the head of Agronomy, and the Secretary of Department of Plant Pest and Disease, lecturers and students for being here today. Your presence and support are highly appreciated. Before we proceed with the opening speech from the head of Department of Plant and Pest, Plant Pest and Disease, I would like to take a moment to emphasize the importance of this guest lecture. Moringa is a plant with incredible potentials for improving human health and environmental sustainability. By gaining a deeper understanding of these toxins, we can unlock new possibilities for agriculture, medicines, and more. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my honor to invite the head of Department of Plant, Pests, and Disease to deliver the opening speech. To Mr. Lukman Kurota Aini, PhD, time is yours. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, all of the audience. Uh, to Honorable Dean of Faculty of Agriculture, University of Rawijaya, um, Head of Agriculture Science Department, Professor Kuruswantong, Head of uh, Agronomy Department, Bu Dian, and Secretary of Plant Pest and Disease Department, Bu Rina, and also all professor and experts who will give a presentation as speakers today and all the audience in in this room and also uh, online yeah in zoom uh, first of all i would like to thank god almighty because we can join this forum in a good condition good health Hoping all of you still have uh, health. <laughs> okay, and welcome to our guest lecture forum. Although this uh, guest lecture uh, held uh, directly and in, in hybrid also in Zoom, and this lecture actually held as a forum for scientific communication for all stakeholders, including our students, lecturers, scientists, and the general public, public to update the latest knowledge about the Moringa. This for forum also held in collaboration between the uh, Department of Plant Pest and Disease Department of Agronomy and also Department of Agricultural Science. So, Moringa is well known as Miracle Tree. FAO already announced about this Miracle Tree. There's high nutrition food and super food, high in vitamin, also the nutrition. And I also consume every day <laughs> because I also planted uh, maybe 15 trees of uh, Moringa in next to my house. Uh, but now it's disappeared because this land is uh, my sister. <laughs> so the, she want to build a house to already disappeared. <laughs> so I want to plant to other place. <laughs> Usually, I consume in capsule. I made by myself. I write and 
um, put into the capsule and I so because I know that this moringa is super food for and already established in Africa yeah to plant this to uh, cope the nutritional yeah deficiency in Africa. That's why it is very important for us to hear about this topic and also I want to hear. Uh, and on this ecosystem occasion, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to all of the speakers who are willing to share their knowledge and experience with us. First one is Prof. Paul Gia Kessler from Leiden University. And the second one, Professor Eduardo de La Peña from Chen University. And third one, Professor Kuswanto is our professor here in UP that uh, had a lot of work in Moringa also. And also Dr. Siti Rana Mengala as chairman of Moringa Society in Indonesia. So also we thank to the Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture who has facilitated this first lecture. Um, I'm sorry that the Dean and the deputy of Dean cannot come uh, today, they cannot join because as a meeting uh, in the rectorate building. And thanks also to committee who have worked hard to have this activity and all the audience who are willing to attend this forum. So on behalf of the Dean of Faculty of Agriculture, we hope that this case lecture can provide benefit and new insight for sustainable agricultural development of agriculture, uh, particularly in Moringa. Okay. So that it will, it will further increase the benefit to entire community. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for Mr. Lukman Kurota, Aini PhD, for the opening speech. And before we start the presentations, I would like to ask the distinguished guests and also the head of the department to take a picture in front of. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we should take a picture. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. And the next is the presentations, which will be divided into two sections. The first sections will be moderated by Mr. Andy Kurniawan, PhD. We will have the pleasure to hear from our distinguished speaker, Professor Kuswanto, followed by Professor Paul J. Kessler. After the presentations, we'll have a question and a session. In the second, read it by Mrs. Frelita Ainu Zaro MP, we will have the honor to hear from uh, Mr. Siti Ranamengala, PhD, followed by Professor Eduardo de la Pena. Again, we will have a question and a sessions after the presentations. Before we proceed with the lecture, uh, let me introduce our moderator for the first sessions, Mr. Andy Kurniwa, Kurniawan, PhD. He is a lecturer from the Department of Agronomy. His expertise is plant physiology. Uh, please welcome him with a round of applause.
Yeah. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you to the uh, master of ceremony for the floor. So before I, we start the presentations, let me invite our keynote speakers for the first section to Professor Koswanto and Professor Paul J. Kessler. Please welcome to the stage and have a seat. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the first, before we start the presentation, uh, dear honorable chairman of the Department of Plant Disease, of Plant Pest and Disease, uh, and also the chairman of the Department of Agronomy, uh, thanks for your coming. And today, I am Andy Koniawan, will be the moderator for the first session for today's lecture activity. So the first uh, session will be have two speakers to two give speakers. the presentation. Our first speakers will be presented by Professor Dr. Insignor Koswanto MP. Sorry, maybe the the top of the slide is. Okay, so for the, our first speaker is Professor Dr. Insinu Koswando MP. For the, before he start the presentation, let me explain a brief introduction about him. So he is a professor of plant breeding. He got a professor in 2008. And then he is active lecturer in the laboratory of plant breeding, Department of Agronomy, Faculty of Agriculture, Brawijaya University. And then in 2012, he got a five patents of yarn log bean variety and also got extraordinary intellectual property awards. And also, up to now, he got the 12 intellectual property rights and has released uh, to, to, to 29 of variety of yarn log bean. And his expertise is about plant genetic diversity plant breeding and underutilized crops. And he also published an extensive research article on plant breeding and genetic diversity. And current position of Professor Koswanto is chairman of graduate programs, Faculty of Agriculture, Pravijaya University. Without any further ado, allow me to invite Professor Dr. Insignor Koswanto MP to present his material. And Professor Koswanto, you will have 15 minutes to present the material, and time is yours. 15 minutes. Yes, bro. Okay, thank you very much, moderator. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Venerable Prof. Paul and Prof. Eduardo from Penn University and then Honorable Pak Sidirana Menggala. Selamat malam Pak Didi di sana. Morning. Oh, selamat pagi Pak Didi. And then uh, terima kasih Pak Lukman Ketua Departemen APT Bu Norahmi Ketua Departemen PT. And then all of student here, thank you very much for your coming. I will present my uh, article under the title Moringa. I say Moringa or Moringa. Moringa is, is, it, is, it, is it is same, yeah, but, but Moringa or Moringa. My article plan in Indonesia. 
my name is Kuswanto, and I come from Underutilized Crop Research Center, University of Brawijaya. Yeah. And okay, this is this picture for Moringa. Okay, karena ini pesertanya banyak yang masih selfie. Set. I let me to present in English and Bahasa mix Bahasa Indonesia and Bahasa English. Then next, Moringa or Kelor in Indonesia. In Java we say Kelor. Sudah terkenal kan Kelor ya? Moringa ya. The most important of moringa for vegetable soup. Ini most popular in Indonesia, in uh, especially in Java language. The most popular. Uh, dia ada menemani uh, bayam, kadang kangkung, ya, kadang uh, sawi dan lain-lain. And the next, the next one. It is moringa for urap-urap. I don't know in English urap-urap. <laughs> like this. I'm sorry. Uh, but in here, the green one is moringa, the yellow one is corn, and then the white one is the coconut. Like this. The next. And then it is the nodal from moringa. Nodal from moringa. There is product milk, there is lemon tea, there's, there's moringa oil, and cider. Right? And then, like the Pak Lokman mentioned, there is cups, the cups in here. Uh, ini di Batu ada, di Batu, in Malang, already in Malang. Di oven, di oven dulu, sekitar, sekitar 60 sekian derajat, kemudian digiling, nah, jadi seperti ini. Ini adalah produk moringa dalam bentuk kapsul. The next. And then this is moringa for tea, for soft tea, or maybe juice, maybe, maybe juice of uh, moringa, like this. Very nice, delicious. Maybe you must uh, try to drink it. Yeah. Banyak sekali ditemukan di sini. Rasanya enak, segar. Okay. Segar, enak. Ya, silahkan beli. The next. And then this one, uh, product of uh, Moringa. All of Moringa here. There is, it is product of student, al alumni. There is teh celup Moringa, and then pindol Moringa, teh lemon, and then what is masker, mask, masker tentang kelor, eh, masker, ada juga masker kelor, kalau ada, ada pakai masker. And then next, this one, moringa chips, chips like this, and semprong, semprong, semprong is maybe local name from Lombok, Lombok, West Nusa Tenggara. I found it in Lombok. And then chip like this, in the picture, like this, and then it is semprong in here maybe, Opak gambir, maybe, maybe, opak gambir. And then, this one is moringa stick. The stick of uh, moringa like this. And then, this one is krupo, krupo or cracker. Many kind of uh, moringa product. And then, so, from this uh, uses, I try to uh, take some research about Moringa since maybe eight years ago. And the uh, first one, uh, yeah. like the word, oh, sorry, UN statement that Moringa is miracle plant. It is not uh, miracle plant atau tanaman ajaib. Kita sering menggunakan tanaman ajaib. Yang paling sering digunakan untuk Orang mati, pernah dengar? Ya, orang mati kalau dibersihkan menggunakan kelor. Kalau ada orang jahat dipukul dengan batangnya kelor, maka ilmu kebalnya akan hilang. Like this. Yeah. Then usable uh, of moringa, no food plant will multiple medicine uses, natural uh, nutrition, 
it is very good to maintain our fans and then for morning apple fruit the leaves flowers young fruit or pot we say in the pot and seed vegetable so it is the reason why moringa uh, state as marital plant then next uh, moringa moringa foods commodity with high natural nutrition of the tropics because the leaf have vitamin c seven times more than orange it is the reason and then vitamin uh, a four times more than carrot then calcium more time more than meat and potassium three times more uh, three times more than banana and then protein two times more than eggs it is the reason too so moringa is my little plan the next and then uh, the performance of, of moringa we say moringa is set the plan maybe sometime uh, we plant in the front of our house in the front of uh, maybe building and then moringa is set plan because it is steady i take this picture from embassy of indonesia in bangkok I, uh, while i fry the tray in here i take this picture it is easy to get moringa next Moringa is easy to plant in Indonesia. I take the picture in surrounding in East Java and sometimes uh, from uh, Sulawesi and from West Nusa Tenggara, East Nusa Tenggara, from Kalimantan and Sumatera. It is easy to plant. It is the fan like this, the fan, the fan, and then uh, it, I think it is good. Uh, and the performance is good uh, while uh, the plant is not there is a uh, fertilizer there is a uh, what is uh, pesticide and cetera. and then next it is simple uh, the site for moringa site for grow of moringa i found it in all of island in indonesia i take this picture in west sorry uh, sorry in south of Sulawesi and then in west of Sulawesi in west Sulawesi like this many uh, fruit in here many flower here and then I think it is in uh, what is is south east of Sulawesi like this and then next young pot like this it is our research young pot for vegetable stock uh, major pot for seed and i think it is delicious delicious of pomoringa like this it is indicate that there is genetic variability in java is java just in java we have a variability like this next and I try to evaluate uh, some local variety in East Java and uh, Central of Java like this. And we have the conclusion in Java, maybe there is four big group of moring like this. Maybe from uh, petiole, the color of petiole like this, it is red, red. The red, red one, and this the green one, and this red is green one, and then the flower, and then there is the uh, leaf like this, the petiole, the red one, maybe yellow one, and green one. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, Professor. You still have five minutes left to present. Thank you. Okay. Five minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, and then it is the uh, three for uh, sorry, sorry, of uh, leaf and cetera. The next, next one. And this is a pot. Pot. It is fresh pot and dry pot. 
I opened this pot and I got uh, some seed like this, and it is different. The big different of uh, color of seed. It is brown, brown seed. It is black seed, and maybe the performance of the young fruit it is same, like similar, same, but the color of it is different. And then next, uh, this is all part of uh, the plan have benefit for health. It is in the main reason for uh, so moringa is uh, miracle, miracle plant. Like this, it is uh, pot, yeah, fresh pot. Many uses of uh, uh, what is fresh pot, and then the seed, and then this one is color. It is different the color, so like the different kind of uh, moringa. Like this, maybe it is uh, have more more than ten year. And the, it's is the one. And this, what is uh, root? The bell of root. It is uh, important for medicine, medicine like in uh, local medicine like this. And then, uh, so uh, we know uh, now we know the benefit for herbal medicine of moringa like this. First one is high antioxidant and potassium content. And the second one, uh, low uh, cholesterol. Maksud saya ini adalah menjaga tekanan darah ya. Enggak tahu ini kok. Semula bahasa Inggris, tapi PDF bahasa Inggris tapi ditranslate jadi PPT. <laughs> And then uh, ini mungkin mencegah kolesterol maksudnya ya prevent the kolesterol and then reducing uric uric acid nah menurunkan uh, apa asam urat asam urat ya Bapak Ibu kalau asam urat minum minum ini bisa kurung saksinya Pak Lokman sudah terbukti makan tiap hari ya. and good for your eyes and maybe ini nursing mothers ibu menyusui maybe ya mungkin gitu ya Oke, okay. oke, okay, uh, I think uh, it is enough uh, my presentation. Uh, I want to talk you whatever you eat and whatever you drink and the moringa uh, your vegetables. I think uh, enough. Next, thank you very much for your attention. It is the last slide. The name is Devi. Devi, our student. Uh, maybe here, Devi. Devi is uh, alumni from Fakultas Agriculture, um, stay in Kediri, and she is, uh, I think, prospective entrepreneur of Moringa Product. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you uh, to Professor Koswanto for giving us, give us a nice, uh, informative presentation. So before we continue to the our keynote speakers for the second speakers, uh, let me explain a little bit about the session of this uh, session. The first, after finish the lecture from our two keynote speakers, there will be a question and answer session. So for those of you who attend in this room or all of the participants via Zoom meeting, later you can ask the question directly or type your comment or question in the Zoom. Okay, without any further ado, maybe please, uh, yes. This is uh, our second speaker, our guest lecturer, Professor Dr. Paul J. Kessler. He is a uh, LDU, LUF Professor Botanical Gardens and Botany of South Asia, Leiden University, Hortus Botanicus. In 1986, they got a PhD from RPTU University of Kaiser Slater Landau. 
Its expertise is about the botanic garden, plant taxonomy, traditional Asian medicinal plants, Asian forest survey, and systematic botany. And he already published some extensive research article on plant molecular phylogenetic classification and plant taxonomy. And current position is chair in botanical gardens and the botany of Southeast Asia since 2017. Okay, without any further ado, please welcome to uh, Professor Paul. You will have 15 minutes to present the material and time is yours. Selamat siang. Thank you very much for inviting me uh, here to Pravijaya University and especially to your faculty here. I'm very proud to give a lecture here and uh, see so many students. I was informed that not only students from agriculture but also students from biology are here. How many students from biology are here? No, oh, no. <laughs> okay. So because my background, as you have seen, is uh, uh, botany or biology in uh, general, so uh, uh, probably I do not tell them something new, but certainly for the agricultural uni um, students, uh, probably there is some news. My talk is about Moringa, a very special taxon. Taxon means actually a unity within botany within a family, within a genus, and so on. Next one, please. So I would like to explain first also, I am very glad that not only me have developed this uh, talk, but also a student of mine, uh, which has helped me to find the real uh, photographs and so on. So as a professor also, we need help and assistance by others, and I would like to thank Esme uh, to help me uh, in that respect. So as a botanist, certainly I start with the question, what is Moringa? Moringa belongs to the plant family Moringaceae. And you know all the uh, scientific names of a family, plant family, ends up with C-E-A-E. -E. So if you see that name, always a family. So within families, you have usually gener genera, and in this genus, you have only one genus, and that is actually Moringa itself. So that is meant by monogeneric family. Next one. Moringa as a genus is not very big. It has only 13 species, and you can look at their uh, outside and you will see actually you have three main types within that genus that are the bottle trees and uh, of course the name does it say already they are water storing in their trunks in their big trunks like you know probably better the baobab tree from africa so that are about four four different species which exhibit this kind of features. Then you have another type that are the slender trees. So that is uh, uh, a tree which has a normal tree stem and there is nothing special with that. And then at the third part you have the tuberous shrubs with uh, certain uh, thickened uh, parts but they as a shrub you know they usually do not grow higher than five to seven meter, and certainly they have, do not reach a big diameter. Next one. Of course, you know one species very well, that is Moringa oleifera, and that is the best well known and the best studied Moringa species. And of course, it is because of the pods, uh, often called the drumstick tree, because the two pods resemble the drumsticks. Probably I do not tell you much news, but uh, I want to rehearse a little bit. 
next one. Certainly, as a taxonomist, I would like to show you what is the taxonomy of this genus and especially this uh, uh, species. So we have a big kingdom, the plantae. Uh, all the uh, other um, parts are under the, uh, those kingdoms. You have the phylum, Magnoliophyta, the classes, Magnoliopsida. Uh, you have the orders, Brassicalis. You know all the orders, fam uh, names of the uh, orders are always ending up at LES. Then you have the family in this, uh, the order Brassicalis. You have the family as Thea Moringesi already mentioned. Then you have the genus Moringa, and in this case, the species uh, Oleifera. For us as taxonomists and uh, evolutionary uh, biologists, we are of course interested very much in the relationships with other plant families. Uh, with zoology and with human being, it's sometimes easier to see uh, if you uh, uh, have uh, the humans like uh, us, you probably know you are much better or now uh, you are much related with apes, but uh, with plants, that is not always the case because we use very special characters. And luckily, in the last uh, five to ten years, we have new technologies like DNA analysis, looking at certain genes and so on to be more sure about the relationships. Here we are looking uh, with other plant families. Moringaceae belongs to the same order as Brassicaceae, so Brassicalis. And uh, these Brassicalis are, uh, actually have contain usually the glucosinolates and as secondary metabolites. Uh, these are met, uh, secondary metabolites which depend uh, against herbivory. Yes? Yes, so, oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, other uh, families in this order include the Brassicaceae, the Caricaceae and the Limnantaceae. Of course, Brassicaceae and, Lim, uh, and Caricaceae, you know yourself. Uh, papaya, you see here, and uh, with every sarapan in a hotel, you get usually um, uh, Carica papaya. Uh, but of course, uh, Brassicaceae are also uh, very often used here. And the third family are the Limnantaceae, uh, with the meadow foam uh, as an example. Next one. If you are look at the history of the taxonomy, there was a, a quite of disagreement about the Moringesi taxonomy. Actually, Linnaeus placed Moringesi among the sesalpinoid legumes. So uh, sesalpinia you have also here in uh, Indonesia. Uh, this tree is very often uh, pl uh, planted as shade tree uh, in urban areas. Other scientists uh, have argued for Moringiaceae belonging among Violalis and Bignoniaceae. So there are quite a lot of dispute about that. Next one. Here you see a phylogenetic tree uh, with uh, relationships with the families. We use, therefore, modern molecular and morphological studies, and they reveal that they are belonging to the Brassicalis. Moringaceae is most closely related to the Caricaceae family. This is called what we call the sister family. And you see the green star, and uh, beneath, uh, beneath is the uh, Kerry Casey family, they are very much related to each other. And all the other family within the Brassicalis order are not so close to that. Next one. You have already actually uh, heard very much um, uh, about the traditional use, so I just uh, uh, rehearse a little bit. So actually, and that is, I, I found very fascinated fascinating when I uh, read about that, that actually Moringa has been already traditionally used in medicine as early as 150 years before Christ. So you, you see it's, it's a long history and uh, 
I never uh, thought that uh, such a, a plant would be used so long already. And uh, what you have also seen, and that is the reason, uh, because it has been written down, that uh, even in uh, the Romans, the Greek, the Egyptian, and in the Indian empires, these, this plant has already been used for a long period. So as an example, ancient Indian warriors were fed Moringa to relieve their pain and increase their strength. So uh, not only we are doing that now, but already years and years uh, ago at, that had happened. And ancient kings and queens used Moringa to maintain mental and physical health. So uh, seemingly also people in former times do know the uh, uh, positive effects of this tree. Next one. We have heard already that uh, the different parts of the uh, plant can provide uh, uh, several uh, benefits, the leaves, and you see in this case also not only oleifera can do that, but also uh, other species uh, from other countries like in uh, Africa, uh, Concanensis, oleifera, stenopetala, uh, peregrina. So you see actually not only one species uh, can be used uh, for these kind of activities, uh, but also other species related uh, to that, to uh, oleifera. Uh, many parts actually has also non-medicinal uses, so uh, the pots and leaf we uh, were already mentioned, the oil extracted, seeds and bark and wood pulp for create paper as an example, and we have heard uh, uh, earlier uh, that so many things has been uh, done here already in Indonesia and uh, that is really was an, an incredible broad spectrum of uh, things. Uh, which has been developed here. Next one. Um, also, you have the Moringa are really most nutrient rich, which is of course very important. If you have not much uh, uh, food, then you, if you add these kind of uh, uh, parts, uh, that you get at least more nu nutrients, uh, and that is for some people at least very important. Of course, if you are a, a, a rich urban civil, uh, civil servant, then it is not necessary, uh, but uh, for other people that may be necessary. And of course, uh, to add vit vitamin A, C, and so on, it's a, a, a good thing because very many people at this moment uh, do not get uh, the correct intake of these vitamins. Uh, What is also very uh, uh, nice to see is actually that they uh, contain all essential amino acids, which is not really general in plants. So, and that makes it uh, also uh, very good because you need these amino uh, acids uh, for surviving. And if you have uh, these already from one plant, you do not need to have a good vari uh, variation, so you don't need to think about that. And because of its size, nutritional value is really very valuable for the food source in developing country where nutritional deficiencies are at rife. So where are this genus found? You see, uh, 11 of the 13 species are native to African countries. Uh, you will later see that probably uh, again. Two are native to northern India, beneath the Himalaya, and you see also uh, that uh, Moringa can now found in any tropical and subtropical region. And that has, uh, of course, to do that humankind are bringing it uh, to various regions because uh, um, that uh, is so important so that they that uh, people bring it with them yes so if you are looking uh, for the uh, environment you see that the temperature should at least have a minimum of 20 degree but it is also not uh, bad if it is gets higher up to 30 
Uh, of course, you have need a minimum rainfall, but that is true for many uh, other uh, plant species. Uh, but the range is really very high. If you see from 800 to 2,000 millimeter a year, it's really a big variation. And also the soil pH is also re relatively wide from 4.5 to 9. So actually uh, many soil types are suitable uh, for planting Moringa. Uh, and also uh, you see from clay to sandy, uh, and uh, what I have found is that it should be not waterlogged. So really in, in mangrove or so, uh, that, uh, um, uh, that species cannot survive. But it is also resistant to drought and high temperature, meaning that uh, nowadays we have the climate change getting hotter and hotter then uh, uh, this species might be also one of the uh, uh, cases which might uh, help us as human beings to survive. So, so in the agricultural practice, that is uh, for many of you uh, much better known than for me, uh, it is a very fast growing species uh, that is uh, uh, very uh, nice, of course, in uh, um, in Sudan, as an example, as in Africa, they usually use seeds. In many other cases, uh, the cuttings are used because they are growing, of course, very often faster, like, uh, and or the seeds are not available. So then you, you use cuttings, of course, uh, earlier. But of course, the problem with cuttings very often is uh, that you get only one genetic variation. And if, if you have that, yeah, that can in future also have some negative impact. And seemingly India is the greatest producer uh, of uh, Morinda uh, oleifera uh, worldwide. There was one, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, actually, you have also to look at the status of the, uh, how the wild species at least uh, uh, of the, whether they are endangered. And uh, what you see actually is that uh, so seven species at least are endangered in the wild. So it's really a, a problem. And uh, one of it is actually already extinct. Uh, Olifera, because it is cultivated, is not true for that. But uh, uh, we don't know actually whether we re still have really wild origin of this species. What, is the, what are the main threats uh, to the wild population is, of course, herbivory, overgrazing, uh, and so on. But, of course, as we have seen, the, uh, there is an increasing demand of local populations. And, of course, then you, it leads to overharvesting. And if you do that, of course, then you lose the wild plants. Sometimes, of course, uh, drought is a very, um, uh, can be a problem. Uh, but uh, at least uh, it worsens the effect uh, of uh, losing these species. And in some species also the regeneration time is very slow. So what can you do for con the con conservation aspect? So exceed to conservation in botanical gardens and so on, or in, in forest sites, you have if, if, uh, at UB, uh, you have a forest garden, you could uh, probably do these kind of things. Uh, then, of course, uh, what you can do is, as uh, part of the university, uh, we as a scientist, we can do scientific research on these kind of things. But we can also do, like, uh, collect Moringa seeds to exchange to very, various botanical gardens, but also to other institutions, but also probably to farmers or others. And uh, what I feel always as a director of a botanical garden is that public education and outreach is very important to know that people know about the importance of Moringa. I think that is always a very uh, good thing to do. So I have uh, looked up, uh, if you see uh, for the whole genus, uh, actually, uh, 
four species are not represented in botanical gardens and only Moringa olifera is probably uh, relatively widely uh, um, cultivated in botanical garden. So that means actually uh, that uh, even uh, ex situ cultivation, ex situ protection is not really well done. Oh, th there's one uh, slide missing. Uh, I would like to thank you very much uh, for your attendance here. And uh, I hope there are some questions. I understood that after this uh, session, you can have some questions. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you to the, our second speakers, Professor Paul, to give us such an uh, interesting presentation of topic about Moringa plan. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now is the time for the question and answers sessions. So for those of you who has any questions, please raise your hand. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, first, uh, thanks for the chance for questions. Um, afternoon, sir. Uh, um, I have questions uh, regarding all the advantages or the benefits that you have stated from the um, Mr. Corsvanto and all of you. That's it effective for healing ourselves because you know. Men that have their own uh, uric acids, I mean, sometimes, and he go to the hospital for buying, for buying um, the, for the medicines. If not, if not effective, why the ancient people and on other hands um, use it for healing themselves? And I want to advise uh, why. I don't know. Uh, I don't see or phrasing about the um, protein statements they have conduct. Because, you know, I have already um, read some journal articles that it has the protein also. And the third ones for questions, uh, I mean, second ones, how to make sense if, if it has the exceptional drought resist properties? Thanks. Thank you all. Drought resist. Drought, drought resist. Thanks. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your questions. Uh, yeah, uh, sometimes, of course, uh, these plants um, have so many um, uses that uh, uh, we as scientists also do not um, research every single thing. So that means uh, uh, what, what I uh, uh, think is uh, that um, especially uh, for using it in a general way you should really uh, analyze these kind of things and then come to a um, proper advice for whom you should use these kind of things so sometimes yeah it it is not clear uh, at this moment uh, um, uh, what for uh, or against what you you should use it always so that is a little bit of more um, uh, studies necessary uh, for for doing that, what what you are doing under these com, um, under these uh, circumstances is actually, of course, uh, if a plant and that may, does not make whether this is moringa or not uh, has certain um, activities, and you do not increase the concentration, then for practically everyone is good to use. So that's uh, my question. And the second, I have forgotten. Sorry, uh, the second question. Um. I have uh, already read some book, yeah, some article from the journal. Um, I have also um, uh, know if it if it if it has the protein also. Why you not state proteins is contains on it? It's only vitamin A. It's only vitamin C like that. Yeah, uh, what you are do actually doing is uh, that you if if you have the protein there. 
that's a normal thing. So, so probably nobody is so interested to analyze that uh, in in a, in in the future. But I would would say try to do it yourself or with your colleagues and uh, show us uh, what kind of proteins th uh, uh, there are uh, in 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 that uh, plant. Okay. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you for the Mr. What's your name? Oh, thank you for Mr. Pima for the nice question and also the nice answer from Professor Paul. Okay, for the second question. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, thank you for Professor Paul for the uh, explanation of Moringa, uh, a very special text. Uh, before, my name is Raifan De Niro from Faculty Mathematics of Science, Biology Department. I would like to ask a more basic question as the previous, previous question that has been asked. Uh, a Moringa aloe vera is a taxonomy of Moringa C family. According to the previous explanation, it is also a brassicalis order and it produces uh, glucosinolates as a secondary metabolites to defend against herbivores. Uh, meanwhile, the previous presentation from Professor Kuswanto, uh, Moringa is commonly utilized as a uh, food. And the question is how? How is this even possible? Uh, we developed a special immunity so that we could overcome this obstacle so that we can consume or else. Thank you for any unpleasant words. Thank you. I think that is a really very good question. Uh, the, uh, you have totally right. It is uh, against herbivory. That means actually uh, these plants are, have probably no... Um, nothing developed uh, uh, against human beings because you are al also eating brassica uh, every day or almost and uh, also they have the same glucosate. So that means actually the plants has not developed uh, these kind of uh, chemicals against mankind but against insects and other um, uh, animals. Is it enough, the answer from Professor? Or do you have any feedback? Uh, no, thank you for the answer. OK, thank you for the second question. Professor Paul, let me read the questions for the participants who join us in the Zoom Zoom meeting. So the question is come from Abdul Rahman Siddiq. His question is, what are the challenges or obstacles to do ex situ conservation, especially in botanical gardens, related to Moringa based on your experience? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, actually, um, there are many, many regulations at the moment for exchange of uh, seeds and living plant material from one uh, country to the other. Uh, that is one. Uh, of course, if you are looking uh, at one country like here in Indonesia, you have uh, quite a lot of uh, established uh, botanical gardens like uh, not far away Povodadi, uh, but also Kemoraya Bogor or Chibinong, uh, uh, um, uh, not Chibinong, uh, sorry. Uh, nearby Bogor, uh, and uh, so there are many more possibilities and these can be used uh, actually also for protecting these kind of uh, plants uh, within one country. But if you want to exchange to other countries, there are many regulation, regulations available uh, and that hampers sometimes uh, these uh, exchange uh, of uh, plant material. Although I personally uh, find it 
uh, very necessary because then you also reduce the risk that uh, uh, plants are um, getting extinct. If you are look at uh, zoological gardens as another example, you know probably already that like in um, uh, 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 panda, elephants, and so on, they have breeding programs about the whole world, not only in one or two countries. And I think these kind of activities we should try to establish also in botanical gardens. Okay, thank you, Professor Paul. So for Mr. Sidik, hopefully the uh, explanation from Professor Paul is clear enough to answer your questions. So does anyone have... Oh, okay. Um, hello, test? Test? Hello? Hello? Okay, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. So my name is Sabrina Villa and I'm from first three department. So I was wondering that uh, I have two questions. So the first one, you mentioned earlier that Moringa is become endangered in several of these species. So you also mentioned that about uh, ex situ conservation. I was wondering if there are any Moringa breeding method or have you ever experienced to do some propagation or breeding method like uh, hybridization or something like that? If there is, uh, if we have some superior species, superior species uh, that is to be the parent of the species, is there a plan to do a clone for the propagation of Moringas? Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I must uh, admit that I personally do not have so much experience with Moringa in that respect, because in our uh, botanical garden we do also do not have this species. Uh, the uh, problem is uh, very often if you, yeah, I understand uh, because you are, you are a forester, that you want to have good clones planted regularly because you want to have a high result. But if you are looking more uh, biologically, uh, then you probably should not only go for those, but you should make a mixture of several uh, clones and several the wild, uh, wild species and so on. Uh, probably you have heard uh, about bananas uh, these times. Uh, uh, practically all bananas cultivated in South America, which are for the market in uh, North America and in, in Europe, only consist of one clone. And now they are really uh, have really big problems uh, because they are uh, uh, having um, fungi, fungi tech and others, and now they are dying. And certainly every single the tree is, uh, is, is dying in that respect. So I would say um, you should have a good variety and range of uh, various species from uh, various origins, and then certainly uh, can, can try to um, uh, hybridize and to, to look uh, for the best clones, but remain the other ones also. So uh, not throwing away the rest, but uh, have them available in case you need them in a later stage. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Can, can you hear me? Test. Okay, Hello. Thank you, Professor. So, we got some uh, comment from the Professor Eduardo and also Mr. CPSD. So, they will give some questions, right? Question or comment? In the Zoom. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello, hello. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, CD, we hear you, I think. Okay, now, I mean, um, uh, let's invite Prof. Eduardo to give a uh, uh, discussion about uh, his uh, point of view. Oh, 
I don't know if you hear me. I presume you do. I do. So, we do. We do. Yeah. We do. So thank you very much, Sidi, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Kessler, for uh, for this wonderful presentation. Um, Bravo Yaya University for organizing uh, this. Um, I just have a couple of questions um, to ask to, to Prof Professor Kessler. So perhaps, um, yeah, he can uh, yeah, elaborate a bit of uh, on a couple of uh, yeah, ideas and, and, and questions. So one, one question I have, um, I think from, from the presentations that we hear this morning, uh, Moringa is often presented as a, as a miraculous tree, as a miraculous species. And as you, Professor Kessler, uh, Kessler mentioned, um, in a developmental context, uh, Moringa is presented as a, as a solution to many, many problems. No? So it's good for, for soil health. It has all these nutritional benefits that uh, were mentioned today in both presentations. And one question I have is, I mean, the, this species has obviously many benefits, but, but the question is why is not picked uh, more often outside developmental context? I mean, why, why, why this, this success story is not uh, uh, taken farther? Is there any reason for it? Do you think it's a matter of promotion? It's a matter of, uh, or how do you see about it? Um, for your question. Yeah. Do you hear? Yeah, now it's uh, on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for your question. Uh, actually, uh, I think there are two problems. Um, I prefer as a botanist certainly to have diversified things, I just uh, uh, explained already to you. So I am not in favor to uh, promote only one mir miracle tree in, in that mm -hmm. respect. That is, but that is a very personal um, opinion. Uh, the second uh, question you have uh, is why uh, only a few uh, um, areas are or uh, uh, countries are promoting these kind of things. Uh, what I think is. Um, is uh, really it is a matter of um, um, telling people uh, what is going on and if you are doing that and whether that is from um, universities onwards tot, tot, uh, uh, until uh, up to the business then uh, there is no um, uh, uh, means uh, that there are uh, people are convinced uh, to do so so uh, I always uh, uh, think, uh, and we will we do that in botanical gardens very well. The information, say the outreach to other people, uh, I would not say selling uh, in in a way, but I think the outreach with the, uh, uh, the knowledge we have at school mm -hmm. um, is uh, very important. Mm -hmm. well, sure. Thank you. So I, I actually agree with you in the in the fact that uh, yeah relying only on one species and presenting one species or one sort as as the, as the solution to many problems is of course uh, yeah sometimes a, a, a doubtful approach. But going back to the diversity that you also mentioned and the importance of having diversity, germoplasm diversity, you presented. Um, some some information about uh, the fact that some species are endangered and that uh, well moringa uh, uh, moringa oleifera is well um, well conserved in the in the in some germoplasm collections but if um, if you want to preserve eh, my second question is if you want to to preserve or conserve the the diversity of uh, of Moringa, where would you sample? Where do you think is the area, the geographical area where you have highest diversity, highest variety? Uh, so if you want to pick up this diversity, where would you collect uh, uh, material? Is the uh, Indian subcontinent or, 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 or where do you think you have, you have the broadest diversity?
I think it's the connection, Prof. Only for what you have seen in the list already in Africa. So that means actually uh, Africa. And I have no idea, idea, I must admit. Oh, better now? Better? You, you hear me? Yes, yes. now it's better. Yeah, yeah. Now, now we now hear you. Better? Uh, I think uh, if you uh, would like to have uh, more connections uh, with the uh, African species, which are more under, under threat, then you should uh, uh, collect there. Uh, because if you are looking uh, taxonomically or botanically, the chance that the sisters of have the same so that 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 is uh, one of the yeah um, statistically uh, uh, things uh, we always say uh, if you if if you are a brother of mine of course uh, the chance that you have the same genes uh, are higher uh, than uh, if you are not family of mine so that's uh, the same of course uh, uh, for the plants thank you very much professor kessler from my side i don't have uh more questions and i see that there are other questions on the in the chat so perhaps uh so thank you very much and thank you thank you professor eduardo for your Good uh, comment and also the questions. Maybe next to the Mr. CD, do you have any comment or question to Professor Kessler? No. <laughs> it's good. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, I think you have another question there in the box from um, uh, Mary or I don't know, uh, Merinda, I think it's it's a really interesting question, I think. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so this is a question from Merinda in the Zoom meeting. Good afternoon. My name is Merinda. My name is Merinda. I want to ask a little bit question. Moringa have a lot of nutrients from secondary metabolism. We often use treatment of stretching such as drought and high temperature for increasing secondary metabolism. But in Moringa, we know that this plant have resistance of drought and high temperature. So can we still use stressing such as for increasing secondary metabolism? Thank you very much. Thank you for the question. Um, I must admit I have no answer of that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a I specialist think... in that question, but probably Pasidi best better. No, I'm also not a nutritionist, Prof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have really uh, asked a, uh, a nutritionist, otherwise <laughs> I really don't know as a botanist. But this is a good question, of course. Thank you, Professor, for your comment. So do we still have any question? Uh, there's someone raising their hand. It's Mary Tambaria. So this is next question come from Mohammed Iksan via Zoom meeting. So his question is, what is the exact number of species in the taxon of Moringa? so far i see it is 13 so uh, that is but of course uh, uh, i'm uh, sure there was not really a revision of uh, that species so uh, uh, if somebody is interested uh, to do that revision please start i would say okay thank you professor is have the next question from
from Mary Tamberia. Hello. Um, Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you, but we cannot see you. <laughs> uh, okay, I just want to I just want to give some insight regarding to the use of uh, moringa. I am a, a food scientist uh, from Gen University. Hello, Professor Paul. <laughs> yeah. Um, for the nutrition point of view, we can uh, we can consume many material uh, of uh, uh, plants, but this is also related to the uh, condition of the person. And the same issue with uh, consuming uh, uh, some material for traditional medicine. We need to make sure what our body needs. We cannot generalize everything based on what people say, but we need to make sure what kind of a chemical compound that is benefit to our body. For instance, we cannot consume Moringa if we have problem with our, uh, let's say, ulcer or something else, let's say we have uh, some issue with uh, HEPAR issue. So we need to make sure what we need and natural product resources contains a lot of chemical compounds. And in order to consume as a traditional medicine, we need to make sure the purification and the selection of the compound which is benefit to our body. And the same, if we consume uh, Moringa, let's say we consume uh, 100 grams of fresh leaf. For someone, this person can have diary, but for somebody else, even 200 grams, this is still fine for her. So this is really specific and related to uh, consume something we need food uh, habits and we need to make sure that this, uh, we need to make sure that we have uh, adjustment in order to consume something, either as traditional medicine or as a food. So just like the introduction of uh, rice to people in Papua, it is not that easy. So we need to make sure a lot of study regarding to use of certain kind of uh, material to be consumed or to be accepted as a traditional medicine. A lot of people can use anything uh, which is, for instance, uh, every, every day consume this uh, Moringa, but some other even try one, maybe only one teapot of uh, Moringa tea, but still already got a uh, fatigue or something else. So we cannot generalize for everything. This is my point of view. And related to the uh, question of Merinda, uh, I tried before to plant uh, Moringa stem from uh, South Sulawesi at home. And the plant cannot be, uh, uh, the plant cannot grow in that time. But uh, I need to adjust with the condition of the soil first. So uh, adaptation is the, I think, one of the key issue we need to introduce to our region. This is my point of view. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Oh. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Mary Tamberia, for your good uh, point of view or comment for today's lecture. Do we have any other questions or comment? For the audience or the participants, do you have any other questions to Professor Paul? 
<coughs> no more questions? Hopefully the explanation is clear enough for you guys. So ladies and gentlemen, finally we come to the end of this uh, lecture activity. Before closing the seminar, I want to draw conclusions from what the speaker said. From the first speaker that is explained by Professor Coswanto, he explained about the Moringa is very useful plant, can be used as a food, drinks, and natural medicinal plants. It contains natural nutrition, vitamin, protein, calcium, potassium, and etc. All, all of parts of the plant have benefits for health, such as leaves, roots, also seeds. And the Moringa plant is easy to grow in all of islands in Indonesia. Moringa can be used mm. to create many products and it kind of pers perspective of business to get uh, income for society. And the conclusion for the Professor Paul, he explained about the detailed explanation of Moringa family and classifications and then the time the most common plant is Moringa oleifera, and also he explained there are 13 species of Moringa that belongs to the Patos trees, slender trunks, and tuberose sharps. And then the beneficial purpose for traditional medicinal or either non-medicinal purpose. The Moringa can be found in the tropical and subtropical regions such as India, Ethiopia, Philippines, and Sudan. And the resistant, the moringa is resistant to the extreme conditions such as drought and high temperatures. Once again, I would like to thank to the yeah. Professor Paul for the informative and interesting presentation for us today. And also for all the particip participants for their active participation. Also to the Mr. C D and Professor Eduardo. Thanks for your But we still have a session, right? Questions. Sorry, we still so have a session, right? Before we close the this session, or oh, this, this session uh, from okay. for Professor Eduardo to come to the front to, to receive the appreciation <laughs> from the faculty. Thank you. Gimana sih ini? Okay, thank you to the Professor Paul and all the participants for your participation today for the first sessions. Now, thank you and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Andi Kurniawan, PhD. And now we are moving to the second sessions. Uh, the sessions will be moderated by Mrs. Fredita Ainu Zahro, MP. She is a lecturer from the Department of Plant Pests and Disease, and her expert is in plant pests. For Mrs. Fredita Ainu Zahro, time is yours.
Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Ms. Azeri. Uh, Professor Aduando and Bapa CD, can you hear my voice clearly? Well, I can hear you. Okay, okay. Um, but uh, Eduardo, everybody. but sorry, Eduardo already left uh, because he has a uh, teaching uh, within a couple of minutes. Uh, so uh, it's only me. <laughs> okay. Um... Okay, uh, Baba Cindy. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome you to this guest lecture. Um, I'm Fralita, or you can call me Frey, only Frey, the moderator of this second session. Uh, we are here today to listen um, a speaker from Ken University, Baba Cindy Renamugala, PhD. And um, I hope I mentioned the right greeting. It's already afternoon or still morning. It's still 10 in the morning. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's still. But why are the students are leaving? Okay. Where Ladies are the and students gentlemen, before eight, the presentation three, begins, three? let me inform you how the presentation will be going on in this session. So, Ray, why uh, are the students leaving? Why are the students leaving? <laughs> they have another class. So... Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, they will come back after this. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. C D, I will uh read you by you before. So, Mr. C D is a um, uh, bioscience engineering. Uh, I mean, bioscience engineer in Ken University and also spice enthusiast. He became an executive director of Sustainable Spice Initiative Indonesia since 2021 to 2022. A director of agriculture at Africa Global Development. Change initiative in Indonesia and also a chairman of Bian Moringa Indonesia Association since 2021 until now. So uh, let us hear what speakers share about Moringa. So let's pay attention for you guys and also the audience. So Baba Cindy, time is yours. Is my voice clear, Frey? Yes. You can hear me. Uh, maybe. Okay. Can you yes, hear me? I can. Yes, I can hear you clearly. You can hear me clearly. So, um, hi everyone. Um, selamat siang ya in Indonesia. Um, according to Rina, I should speak in English, and she said it's a must. So I will go further on in English. Is Prof Paul still available in the room? Yes, sir. Okay. Hi, Prof. Pao. Prof. Pao is basically my mentor. So on behalf of my mentorship, <laughs> I will just follow his guideline and present what I have today. Uh, so we can start, Pray. We can start now? Yes. Yes, of course. Sir. You can okay. start now. Okay, I can start. So first of all, thank you for uh, everyone that are still joining this uh, my last session of the day, and uh, I want to greet uh, Prof. Kuswanto. Is he still there also? No. No, he's yeah, unavailable. Yeah. Only Prof. Paul and the delegation of uh, the faculty, the dean, and so are they still there? Uh, the representative. No, only Prof. Paul here and the audience. only Prof. Paul. Okay, okay. So I, I want to greet Prof. Paul and also want to greet uh, my dear September. She's here and uh, everyone joining. And Mary, hi, Mba. How are you, Mba? And uh, Budevi and other other uh, people that are joining. So um, 
thank you for this um, uh, opportunity given by Brevijay University. So I have this topic that I want to share today is not to continue uh, about more about the taxonomy, but about the potentiality of uh, the superfoods. That is what I'm going to share with you today. And if you can see my presentation, can you see my presentation, Frey? Yes, we can see it. Yeah, you can see it. So um, once again, uh, this is uh, my topic to be presented to you all today. So Moringa is superfood. So in the next uh, couple of minutes, I will present to you about um, the Moringa itself but not uh, complete. And also the second is related to the superfood categories. And the third is about what is superfood and how can Moringa meet the superfood criterias. And number four is related with the opportunities. And the last one is my conclusion about how to become a superfood. So um, there's this book that I read. Uh, I think it's like a two days ago, I went to the library. I was curious about the Moringa itself and the tree in general, and also the history. So one of this book that I read, it stated that Moringa is a tree brought from the mind of God to the hands of man. So it's it's something, you know, if this this is not new uh, written, it's based on uh, uh, an uh, archaeological found. You can say that it's a manuscript. So. Uh, it means that the tree, as Prof. Paul has mentioned or shared to us, has already been in our society since thousands of years ago. So um, let's continue. And this is also what Prof. Paul has been uh, mentioning to you all today. It was basically founded in India. It's true. It's around 2000 uh, BC or before Christ. So uh, I show you also this picture on the, on the right side. So according to this manuscript that basically Indian fighters against the Roman used Moringa to heal their wounds and correct profile, they use it. So it's another way of saying that this is like uh, what the Dean has mentioned in, in his uh, first uh, say that it's a miracle tree. And we want to know why it's basically a miracle tree and you can have a comment and you can have a say, I'm very welcome to it. And this is um, the tree that gives wonder for humans, but not only for humans, but also for animals. Because most of the uh, buyers that I've met uh, and also people that I consume says that Moringa can be also a cattle feed and also used in camels and also for goats and stuff. So it's not only for humans, but also for animals. So as Professor Paul has presented, there are different kinds of species of Moringa. You can see in this map, the uh, red indicates where the Oliveira is located. But there's also other places in, uh, in, in Africa that grows other type of species you can see in the map. So it's not, uh, it's not uh, focused on only one species, but also other species. But the most common marketing or use for uh, nutritional food is the Oliveira lam, as many other speakers before me has mentioned before. But you can see in this uh, map that it basically grows not only in the subtropical continents, but also in the UK. And also some uh, areas in the Netherlands, uh, we have a good friend of ours that also have a greenhouse that grows Moringa. So it means basically that Moringa is a super plant that can grow anywhere besides in the snow. So it can grow in, anywhere and everywhere. And Indonesia itself, it's not only uh, Indonesia consists of 16,000 islands. So, but you know, I've visited most of the islands and I've met very much of the tree in located in everywhere in Indonesia. So I, I do not well present this because it's already been presented by uh, Prof. Paul. So this is basically, if you can see the picture on the left, it's a basic, this is a uh, 
10 years old tree of moringa and it, you can see off the soil i can grow from in a dry dirt as for as also related with the question uh, in the zoom before so it can grow everywhere and you can see from this picture it was uh, uh, illustrated it was on the confas on the 1830 so it's already been known as a miracle tree for medicine and use only for uh, for the uh, for the for the health benefit. And now we're going to the superfood category. So what is superfood? You can you may have heard of people saying this is a, a superfood, that is a superfood. But what is basically a superfood? So superfood is known as high nutritional and biological value with a satisfactory bioavailability and bioactivity within the body to extraordinary concentration of nutrients, nutrients and bioactive ingredients. So basically it's something that is bio, is from the planet, is from the earth, and you take it and you consume it and it's good for you. It contains high nutritional. And most of the category are superfood, are fruits or vegetables, but the thing is, uh, my dear students, my dear friends, there are no legal definition of the term. It's basically a marketing uh, campaign or marketing jargon in Indonesian. So there are no um, legal definition. But the main uh, message that is given by Superfood, it contains a healthy product. So this is where we're going now. What makes a food a superfood? So superfood, in a sense, it has many different kinds of nutrition, many different kinds of uh, messages about the uh, vitamins or that contains in the single uh, 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 compound or category. So it offers exceptional health benefits. Basically, Nothing that we can experience before, and that is what also people like to consume moringa, avocado, uh, cinnamon as a mixture, because it gives you a better feeling of uh, health. In particular, superfood, yes, as I've mentioned before, as also what Prof. Paul have mentioned before, it contains high antioxidants, it contains high minerals, and also vitamins. So this is this is quite unique because superfood needs to have this tree that makes it a superfood. So we go now Moringa as a superfood. So we can see now there are many international labels and campaign about the rise of Moringa as superfood. You can see it on uh, many uh, newspapers or scientific overview, but it is real a superfood. And this is why I'm very interested about Moringa itself. I started to um, be in love with Moringa. It was back in 2021 when I got the opportunity to do a research in Nigeria. It was funded. Um, I cannot say the funder, but I was funded to do a in deep, in-depth research about the Moringa and why it can help the society and also to intrigue and motivate and elevate the livelihood of the local society in uh, Nigeria. So I started to uh, having a passion and falling in love with this superfood. So this is the whole tree, basically, the Moringa tree. So as you can see here in the picture, it contains different kinds of nutrition. It contains different kinds of nutrition and vitamins that is good for you. Yeah, maybe you cannot know everything, but you can see magnesium, calcium, iron, zinc. But I will not uh, share in detail about, let's say one uh, milligram of uh, leaf can is equal to seven uh, cups of milk. I will not go into that because it still needs to be scientifically proven, but it is scientifically proven, this part that it contains very different kind of uh, nutrition uh, and also vitamins and uh, minerals, as I've uh, shared before. So according to this map, you can see the global story of the map that is 
really interesting because not only in India is using Moringa, but different kind of countries already accepted this tree or the leaf at least as their main vitamin or their main super uh, medicine, another way of saying. You can see in Senegal, in Greece, in across Africa, in Guatemala, in Aruba, in India, and also in Indonesia. So uh, to the fact saying that Moringa is not only growing in Indonesia that needs to have access to the global market, but also other countries that grows Moringa needs to promote their uniqueness. Therefore, Indonesian Moringa needs to find its own uniqueness to be promoted. And that's why I chose the topic of superfood today, because we need to promote the superfood Moringa of Indonesia. So why do I say Moringa have uh, or is categorized as superfood? So there are many, many, many research that Moringa, if you consume it, you use it, it can cure you. You know, basically it can cure not all diseases, but at least the, the diseases that makes you feel unwell. You can see asthma, migraine, headache, and so on. And the latest research that was conducted, not the latest, it was like one decade ago. It was a, it was a good research of uh, Adi Jumo that basically Moringa also can help or at least minimize the spread of AIDS. But surely Moringa can, and hopefully I do wish, can cure breast cancer. So there are many potential benefits of Moringa. If you consume it uh, fresh or you consume it by capsule, it is good for you. And also, if you're still single, it is good to increase your sperm for our guys, of course. And... Um, let me say to you today, Moringa health benefit or part of the trees is not only from its leaves, but also from its flower, from its root, from its seeds, from its fruit, and also from their gum. So here are the descriptions of the tree parts that are used day to day by society, as I mentioned in the global map before, the leaves, the root, the bark, the flower, the seeds, the gum. They can cure all of the different and naughty, naughty, naughty uh, diseases. So it is good for you, in other words. And this is scientifically proven. Uh, so feel free to use it. So the leaves, um, the leaf is, uh, this is one of the example. So Martin in 2014 wrote on his publication on Online Health Magazine that the leaves has been shown to contain 46 type of antioxidant and over 92 nutrition. So for those that are nutritionists or for those that are uh, working in the health department, you can should go to his uh, writings. I think it will be good for you. And this is also quite interesting. If you go and look uh, of the compound of the tree that contains uh, in, the mind, in the microscopic way hold on hold on i think the garbage man is coming so i will <laughs> close my window first wait up wait up so monday is a garbage day here in ghent so i need to close the window first so back again these are the minerals that uh, are available in the tree itself, the whole tree, so from the leaves, from the root. Uh, in other words of saying, I'm not an expert in this, I have less experience in the nutrition, but it is scientifically proven and it's safe to consume, in other words. And back again to the superfood, yeah. This is a, a very good example of a packaging. If Ibunda Sharani is still listening, and also a couple of my friends from Beyond Moringa, Indonesia, they're still uh, attending this. Uh, so this should be put on your packaging. If you claim as a superfood, so you need to show them also the nutritional facts. 
This is important because consumers need to be aware of the things that they eat or they consume or they drink. So it needs to be clear. Yeah. As you can see, also, there are no labels of claiming I'm a superfood. You, you have USD organic, you have non GMO, but there are no labels because superfood, if you claim a superfood, uh, uh, status in other words it's volunteer based but you need to put the all of the nutritional facts in your packaging and therefore the opportunities nowadays you can see uh, as prof pao and also prof kuswanto has mentioned before there is a growing market for a healthy lifestyle People want to change their uh, behavior of uh, consuming chemical uh, medicine towards an organic or healthy or bio, biological um, medicine that is good for you. And therefore, you can see until 2026, there is a rise of market growth for global food. So. Uh, here are the people that are attending that are interested in the market of the superfood, not only for moringa, avocado, uh, papaya, but there's a growing market. And this analyze is not done by me, but by a professional uh, body uh, that are measuring the uh, price increases day to day and even year to year. As you can see, this is uh, one of the publication of Barbara Franco Lucasa, the consumer perception towards superfood. Well, you can see from the diagram, there are different kinds of people that have different kinds of uh, uh, reaction towards it. So based on her research, she collected from 453 uh, participants that joined, and most of the people that says that are agree that superfood is good for you is basically the superfoodies, the adventurers, and the involved. But there are also people that uh, are skeptical about it and also people that are rejecting it. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's basically like we do day, day to day. There are people that are pro and there are also people that are against. But... You can say based on her research for the 40, uh, 453 participants, like 85 percent agrees that superfood is uh, a good message and also good uh, way of saying selling your product. And there's also a few and various campaigns done in Indonesia, such as this one from BBC Travel. So they are also promoting that. Bali is returning its lost superfood. And in this picture, you can see it's Moringa Oliveira mixed with corn or mice, and also it's become their daily uh, uh, cuisine. So therefore, my suggestion, if you are uh, into the business of Moringa Oliveira, or if you are students that are uh, going to do more as an entrepreneur, please, and please, and please, if you want to campaign your Moringa and claim as a superfood, please use your voluntary symbol that it's healthy eating. You need to promote that. Because if you say it's just Moringa, Oliveira, tea, blah, 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 but you don't, and, and superfood, but you don't have any information about it's good for you and the nutrition, well, it'll be just be like any other uh, type of packaging that will not that will not attract the superfoodies uh, and also other kind of communities that are or have interest in uh, organic and also uh, superfood category. So the conclusion uh, of me today to you, well, as I've heard many times today, the tree is a miracle tree because because of the nutrition and fact. And it's acknowledged by different and various type of organization, scientific world, academia, and so forth in the whole wide world. As it contains also high rich uh, sources of protein, fiber, and other things. Well, back again, it needs to be promoted. 
that is why also not from the my part in the university but also your part that works in the business please uh, once again if you want to promote superfood uh, put the label and also uh, share the nutritional content of uh, in the packaging so that is uh, what i have to share with you today and uh, feel free to for a discussion and uh, hopefully I can answer uh, all of your questions. So I'll give back to you, Frey. All right, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. CD, for your interesting presentation. Now, uh, let's move to the Q&A session. So if you want to ask a question or some questions, so please raise your hands or you can write down your own question in the Zoom panel. Um, is there any question? Okay. Hello. <laughs> I think we lost the host or the organizer. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me, sir? Hello? No, it's okay. Oh, okay. Okay, there is a question from a student. You hear the last question? So what's the question? Oh, 
so my question is, can we use just one material or one species as superfood material? So uh, if I want to use Moringa uh, as example, uh, I just want to use one, uh, the whole compound of Moringa, uh, but on the other side, we can get the legal right uh, so uh, we can just use the superfood for ourselves, but not for um, market like that. Uh, uh, so uh, do you have a suggestion or um, another uh, uh, something uh, we can use to, if we just want uh, one, the one whole compound from one species, like that. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, uh, I do not understand your question. What is the question, basically? Do you want to use the leaves of your, or what part of the tree of Moringa do you want to use and also uh, market it? I mean, what's the question, basically? Yeah, uh, usually in he uh, here in Indonesia, we use a uh, moringa leaf to um, uh, as a herbal or superfood. Uh, yeah. For example, uh, I already um, buy some superfood, but it's yeah. not whole compound from uh, just uh, moringa olivera leaf, but it contain another. Oh, uh, it's a mixture. Species. Yeah. So can we just use one uh, species? Uh, in sample, I want to use just whole, com whole compound of uh, Olinga, Moringa Olivera leaf uh, as, like that. Sure. As a uh, superfood that we can, we can uh, legally get the, the right to share to the market. So I will answer your question. So uh, to claim to claim you are a superfood in your packaging or whatever things that you are selling. If, uh, like what uh, Prof. Kuswanto have shared before in his lovely picture. So it needs to be only one, yeah? And self-claimed superfood, you need, once again, you need to share the nutrition, the vitamins, and that for that is why you need to have further laboratory analysis. I think you have it available at Brawijaya. They have a good lab there and you can ask them to have it analyzed. And with that uh, analyze, you can eventually put it on your packaging so the consumers can know why is uh, Moringa categorized as superfood because it contains many, many type of minerals, uh, vitamins, nutrition, and so forth. So my suggestion to you, uh, please use a real based laboratory uh, research uh, rather than you uh, copy paste from online. Oh, okay, uh, I have feedback. <laughs> uh, thank you for the answer. So in this case, uh, is that, uh, any differences between the superfood with the uh, with one whole compound of the species uh, between um, superfood and then uh, herbal medicine. In this case, uh, they they both use uh, whole compound. I mean, like that. Is the whole same, tree, you mean? The whole tree. I mean. The, uh, the whole compound of what kind of um, vitamin, uh, like a whole compound, it contain uh, many vitamin, many vitamin, protein, and then and etc. In this case, is this uh, different or the same with superfood and herbal medicine? If the composition is the same, or any differences between the superfood and uh, herbal medicine, just like we know in general. Of course. So um, my answer is yes, it's the same. Superfood is uh, created by the uh, Western terminology about uh, good and healthy food. So they use superfood as supermans, superwomen. 
but it is superfood. But Indonesia, as I know, and I'm also Indonesian, I've been drinking jamu a long time ago. So you can say that every jamu that you drink and you can clap on the seller's uh, back, great job, you're selling superfood. So it's okay. I mean, um, the terminology of superfood is growing, but if you want to catch a new fish in the pond, please use the uh, campaign of superfood. But once again, be, be precise about the information and nutritional that is based on your laboratory uh, research. So that's my answer to you. So, uh, yes, uh, that's all. Thank you for the answer. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sidi. And for your information, uh, Actually, we have Pak Yudi here. <laughs> yes, uh, we have Pak Yudi here that join us in this lecture too. I know you are uh, know well about him. And yeah, he's my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Pak De, yeah? Pak De, oh, in Indonesian <laughs> term. Okay. Yeah, and yesterday we uh, have a small talk about um, herbal tea. Um, and I think it is um, interesting to develop a plan to um, develop into the society, into our society. And um, yes, I think we need to develop it um, uh, larger. I think in the larger scale. Okay, um, that's just for the information and. For the audience, you still, if you still have a question, okay, one question. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I'm Desi, I'm currently pursuing in the Agricultural Entomology Study Program. So my question is, how do we market the Moringa to the farmers so they are willing Once again, so my question, uh, how do we market the Moringa to the farmers so they are willing to produce the Moringa? Thank you. Uh, Pak Sidi, uh, this is Ito. Maybe you could also inform us about your association of Moringa in Indonesia to answer that question. Uh, okay. Well, I thought I was invited on behalf of Ghent University, so... But okay, I will go to that. So, uh, hi, uh, what was her name? Sorry. Uh, I'm Daisy. Hi, Daisy. Uh, I'm CD. Hi, nice to know you. So I'm also the chairman of uh, Indonesian uh, Association of uh, Beyond Moringa. Uh, since 2021, we were established in Denpasar and the office is there. So, um, if you have questions related how you communicate and how you engage with the farmers of Moringa, you can ask the guy that is sitting in front of you, Pak Yudi. So he is uh, well known to work together with the Moringa farmers. And not only with farmers that are physically healthy, but also uh, farmers that are defable. So he has many stories to tell you about it. And the question about how do we engage with farmers to, you know, to be involved in our way of thinking of Moringa, there is a market for it. So just tell them the truth that the Moringa of Indonesia has a very big opportunity to enter European or the US market. Because based on my knowledge, based on my experience, based on my network, uh, many Moringa growers uh, from uh, India, from Sri Lanka, from Madagascar that are selling the goods to Europe is currently under black flag, you know. Why? Because back again, if you want to trade or you want to sell your goods to overseas, you have to be sincere, to be honest that you are selling what you are selling, not plus rocks, plus plastic, plus things that aren't, shouldn't be available in the packaging. 
And I don't want to make a black campaign about the other growing uh, countries of Moringa, but the, the other countries that are producing the Moringa is now um, under very tight supervision of the health department in US, FDA, or also in Europe uh, from the EU organic label, et cetera, et cetera. But you know what? For Indonesian Moringa, it is not known in the international market. So please, if you want to go ahead and share the story that the potentiality of Indonesian Moringa is really, really acceptable. So go ahead. Uh, thank you for the information. I think it's enough. Hmm. Actually, Mr. Smidi, um, how does the association work? I think you will work in so many fields. And <laughs> maybe you can explain. <laughs> okay. Well, um, so the Beyond Moringa Indonesia Association is an association that welcomes everyone, not only farmers. So in the group, in the membership, we have friends and fellows from all around the world and also from farmers up to ambassadors, up to vice ministers, up to, you know, direct maybe to uh, number one in Indonesia, as you can say, that have connection to improve the Moringa uh, society because not only we are as an, uh, that are involved in the system, but it's also we are reflecting how Moringa can be um, to help to reduce stunting in Indonesia. So that is uh, my personal approach that Moringa, I believe, I truly believe that Moringa is a very uh, superfood, even if you buy body shop, uh, uh, products you can see it, it always have moringa in their label um, that is one of the biggest reason um, that i see and i barely use the word calor if i say to my members because calor will indicate another thing in indonesia it indicates more on supernatural but if you use the word of moringa it's more like uh, global marketing uh, uh, information so everyone will uh, recognize it. So um, therefore, uh, we use the name of Beyond Moringa Indonesia. And why we also use the concept of beyond. So besides of uh, for the consumption for food and feed, uh, the Moringa leaves also have two other important things that for me, it's really important. The very first, it works as um, carbon neutral absorption. It can absorb carbon 20 times more based on a Japanese uh, guy that did the research in 2000, I think. But also from my point of view, it works more and more efficiently than the uh, other trees that are available uh, to be counted as a carbon trait uh, or a carbon uh, absorption uh, in Indonesia. And the third part, Moringa is also um, nowadays uh, commonly or becoming commonly as a free energy. Uh, it can be transferred and used as a um, um, for its uh, biogas and also and other things. So there are very much broad opportunity for the development of Moringa, uh, not only for research, but also for business part. And that's why it's called Beyond. Okay, very interesting. And um, we have a question in the Zoom panel. Can you help me to read the question, please? Uh, so the question from the Zoom meeting, Pak CD is, uh, is there any other superfood that have the same benefit like Moringa? I do not believe 
there's another um, um, crop that has more higher nutrition than moringa. I do not believe that. I think, I think um, the cartoon characters of Popeye has promoted uh, spinach uh, higher than higher moringa. Than moringa. It should be moringa to make him to look like Popeye, basically. <laughs> So the answer is no. And hence the Moringa is the miracle tree and the school yes, well, I noticed. Okay. Yes, okay. Sure. You know, the thing is in Indonesia, it's um it's more like the cultural prevention to promote Moringa as a health um a healthy um a healthy nutritional because the the cultural mindset in Indonesia already implanted in them that the calor is used to chase away ghosts and those kind of things. So therefore, if you want to promote to your friends or colleagues about the the nutritional benefits of moringa, just use the word of moringa rather than calor because um, calor is another thing, even though it's the same. Uh, name for a moringa. Even if you go to the Philippines, they don't use their own terminology. Even in Nigeria, it's just moringa. You know, they will understand. So we can start from there. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cindy. Um, one more before I close this session. I noticed that so many beneficial function of moringa like super food, super medicine, miracle tree, how about mystic function? Mystic function, mystic, you mean supernatural? Mystic. Yeah. Mystical. Mystic, uh, yeah, mystical, you know, in maybe Japanese or other rivers or other um, places, you know, um, the morning has a mystic, what I know, uh, I I don't I don't uh, I don't know do you know what I meant or not. Well, I'm a man of science, <laughs> uh, yeah. so I do not believe basically in ghosts and jinns or whatever, even though it's written in my religion. But you know, mystical cre. So let me. This is my theory. This is my hypothesis about it. Uh, even uh, Pa Yudi there, he can confirm it. So everything in this uh, planet has a yin and yang factor. It also needs to be proven. There, you, you know the concept of yin and yang, there's a positive and there's a negative. Even you have South Pole and North Pole, it's always about positive and negative. It's also in the batteries, positive and negative. So the negative, um, the metaphysics, the those are negative, you know. When you feel in the cold room and you can sense your back of your neck, something is watching you over, it's more like a negative part of it, yeah. But you can also say there are also positivity in this world, positivity that are that are basically pure. It has no sense. It has it. It's it's just helping. The air is positive. The water is positive. Everything that are not corrupted is positive. Yeah. It's the same with moringa. It's the same with avocado. It's the same like spinach. Everything that you believe is positive will become positive. And that is plans for you. So if you combine the positive and negative together, it'll become neutral, including for moringa. So it doesn't mean that moringa can cure metaphysics. Other things can also cure metaphysics in Indonesia, but you have to know and believe that it can cure you. Well, plants are plants. They do their best to cure you. They, every kind of plants have different kind of nutrition, but the best nutritional uh, benefit in the, to fight the metaphysics is from the Moringa uh, leaves. So that's my... Uh, it's not, uh, it's not a scientific answer, but I try to uh, hypothe uh, hypothesis it that way. <laughs> yes, 
very interesting. Um, I think this new slide. Okay. And um, so everyone, I think it's the end of this session. But before we close this session, uh, I have uh, we have special gift for uh, Mr. Sidi. Maybe committee can help me to show that. No. Well, thank you. I dedicate this uh, certificate uh, for my September. Okay. okay, Mr. CD, and thank you for the audience who joined us today. Um, I hope I learned a lot today. And maybe if you still have any question about Moringa, you can search on uh, the website. <laughs> Of the Bian Moringa or any other sources. So, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cindy, and also the audience. Uh, okay, back to Miss Azeri. Okay, thank you, Miss Dalipa. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the guest lecture on Moringa, a very special Texan. I hope that the lecture has been informative and insightful for all of you. Thank you for your participation. Sorry. Thank you for your participation and have a good day. Ciao. Thank you. Uh, untuk yang hadir luring juga bisa uh, mengisi presensi secara online juga. Terima kasih. Linknya ada di layar dan akan aktif sampai pukul 19. Terima kasih.